I'd like to share something with you that I saw. It was really beautiful. I saw um, Jesus, and he was high and lifted up. And all around him were women. And I know it's Mother's Day, and I don't think that Jesus necessarily celebrates Mother's Day, but he, all around him were women. And they were, the closest ones to him were kneeling and um, like leaning against his feet and legs, and they were all crying. All the women around him were crying. There were women that were further away, and they were, um, they were standing. And I asked him, why are they crying? Why, is that, why are all the women crying? And he said, they're crying because they want to be close. They, they're crying because there's a cry in a woman to want to be close. There's a cry in a woman to want that relational element, to want to be close to the ones that they love. And, and there's this, it's a never-ending cry. It's just this ongoing cry to be close. And so when they're close to me, they start to cry because this is what they've always wanted. This is what the cry in our heart is. This is just to want to be close in proximity and want to be close emotionally and want to be close and connect and touch and feel and be there leaning against him. And then I was asking him about the ones that were um, further out and they were the ones that didn't know that they were worthy to be close. They were the ones that didn't feel like they could have the right to be close. And I saw that as the ones who were in the closest places, I started to notice them turning and grabbing the ones that were behind and pulling them in and scooching out of the way so that they could get in there. And as soon as they would get in there, they would melt to the ground and they would start to cry and cry and cry. And it just kept happening where the ones that were further out kept getting pulled in. And as soon as they would get pulled in, they would just melt to the ground and start to cry because the, the heart is to be close to him. And I just feel like the Lord is, is using this picture to, and on Mother's Day, it's really sweet that he would pick Mother's Day to say this, but he, I felt like he was saying that there's going to be a move of God that's going to affect the women in a new way. And instead of there being this horrible um, competition and divisiveness and the backbiting, that there's coming a time where the women are going to realize the ones that have been close and have had the opportunity to, to lean on him and to, to be to have him pour out his love and his kindness, his grace and his mercy, that, that, that there's coming a time now where they're turning and they're grabbing the women who aren't and haven't had that opportunity. And so I just expect to see that there's going to be a grace on us as women to, um, to not care about our place so much, to be willing to say, you know what, have my place, take it, please do. I've been able to be there and I will still be there because he is making it so clear that there's not just so many seats at the table. There are not just so many chairs in the home. There's not just a few rooms in the mansion, but there are endless rooms in the mansion. There are endless seats at the table. There is, there's never ending amount of room. And the more, more room that we make for our sisters and our brothers, but in, in this case, our our sisters, the more we take that chance and pull them in, it doesn't matter how hard or harsh they might seem on the outside. They have that cry in them, just like I have that cry in me, that's longing to have the love, that's longing to feel the touch, that's longing to be recognized by the only one who can truly make them feel whole again. This is something that God says has been going on for such a long time, but there hasn't been an opportunity. There hasn't been the grace, but there's coming a grace. So it, in, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for a release of the grace for women to reach out and minister, to reach out in love, to reach out without competition. I pray for a, an 
attitude of repentance that come upon all of us who have been um, competing, have felt like we needed to protect our seat, have felt like we needed to protect our place in the church and outside of the church, that felt like we needed to divide and compete and, and have felt envy and, and even despair when other women got an opportunity that we didn't have and we felt resentful. I pray that there would be a, a spirit of repentance that would fall upon us now and ongoingly and that we would reach and pull them in like never before. And I'm not saying that in any way that the women are gonna run anything or do anything. It's not a political thing. It's not anything like that. But there's a grace that's coming upon women. I just feel like the Lord is saying that this is the time, that this is the hour, that this is the season where we need to get out of our comfort zone and start talking to the women that we thought never wanted to hear it before, that never wanted to hear about Jesus because they had money and they had fame and they had homes and they had everything that anybody would ever need, but they are broken. They are devastated. They are nothing inside. And they need him. So take a chance. Open your mouth. Invite him to church. Invite him over for dinner. Invite him out for a soda. Don't be fooled by the outside. It means nothing. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to do this work. And if this is truly from you, Lord, I thank you that we're going to begin to see evidence of it. In your holy name, amen. Oh! 
never stop working, never stop, never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, never stop, never stop. we just continue, I feel like we need some kind of a response to what Annie shared this morning. And this is what I want us to do. 
You know, Jesus is the way maker. He's the one who made a way for all of us. This word was specifically for women. And I'll tell you, it lines up with the prayers that we've been praying. We were praying for the church on Wednesday night, and we were praying for the family the Wednesday before. And as we were praying, I was just saying, God, would you expand our hearts? Would you expand our hearts to love more, to love more, to love more deeply? but to love more people. And so what I want to do this morning is I want every woman to come and find your place here because we're making room. We want to make space for you. It doesn't matter. I, I woke up this morning. I'm thinking of Mother's Day. I'm so excited. I'm a, I'm a, a mom. You know my heart is a mama. I love my kids. I love my grandkids. And I work at the pregnancy center, and I work with girls who've made lots of decisions that they maybe regret now and they're living with the the choices that they've made right and they're doing the the they they took the high road they took the high road and they had those babies and they're living with the 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 reality of their situation and many of these women might feel that unworthiness that Annie was seeing. They might feel like, how can I really celebrate when, when the way that this all happened was out of order? But I want to tell you, if you are in that situation as a woman, I want you to know that you are not alone, number one. And number two, Jesus is all about bringing healing and restoring hope and forgiving sins and and washing us and making us clean and even if you've done the unthinkable and you've chosen to to end the life of your baby there is still forgiveness there is still grace and there is still mercy and so in this house we want to create a space where every person who walks through these doors will feel loved they will feel safe they will feel accepted they will feel loved they will feel cherished they will feel blessed and so women i just want if you're not comfortable coming to the front would you just stand I just want to pray a blessing over you. Let's just do it that way. Every woman in the house, would you just stand? I just want to pray a blessing over you. I'm looking at these little ones down here, and we've just created space for them right up front. The Lord just put it on my heart a couple weeks ago. I'm just going to bring some fun little toys, and the little ones can just be up front. I don't want them to be in the back. I want them to be up front. I want them to be close to the presence of the Lord. I want them to feel what we're feeling. I want them to experience what we experience because God is no respecter of persons, and he loved these little ones. In fact, he says, let the little ones come to me. Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name. As you have made a way for every one of us, you are the way maker. You're the miracle worker. God, I pray for every woman in this house right now who is a mom. I just pray a blessing over them. And I ask that you would give them grace, that you would give them strength, that you would give them wisdom, that you would provide everything that they need. Lord, you know exactly what every woman in this place needs. And every woman, in fact, who is watching uh, the live stream right now, I just pray for you, mamas, you women, you girls. I just bless you in Jesus' name. I pray for women who have maybe not been able to have children or for whatever reason you don't have children, it's okay. I just pray blessing over women. And Lord, we want to make room. Those of us who have been walking in relationship with you for a long time and we have seen the goodness of the Lord in the good times, in the difficult times. And all we can say is, God, you have been faithful. You can't be anything but faithful. Even in the most difficult 
storms of life, we know that you are with us. And so, Lord, I just pray that as we just make room, as we take a step back so that others can move in close to you, God, that you would touch and you would heal and you would do what only you can do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you know that Jesus is the way maker? In his father's house, there's many rooms, there's many places for us to be. I'm going to ask you just one last time to just stand up this morning. The kids and the moms, dads, everybody, let's just lift our hand and let's bless the Lord. Let's just bless his name. Father, we just bless you. We bless you for sending us Jesus Christ, your son. You gave us the very best. He came. He did your will. He died. He was resurrected. And he ascended back to the right hand of the Father. And he holds the doors of heaven open so that anyone, whosoever will, may come. So we bless you for Jesus. We bless you for the forgiveness of sin. We bless you for the establishment of a new relationship between God and man. We bless you for moms and grandparents and spiritual moms. Bless you and we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless thee, children. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the worship team this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. It's good to have both keyboardists back today. And yes, J.D., it's good to have you back there, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. We have a wonderful privilege today on Mother's Day, and that is to dedicate a child this morning. And uh, what a fitting time, you know? So uh, Judy's going to come, and she's uh, going to help me with this, but... Uh, the Regula family is here, Vivian and Sheetal, and uh, we're going to dedicate Zoe this morning. Hallelujah. We'll call you up in just a moment, but Judy's going to address you. Amen. What an honor to be able to do this this morning. So I'm going to actually do something I'm not used to doing. I'm going to read from the script. <laughs> it's a good script. So we're going to be... Bit uh, dedicating Zoe Regula, and today um, we're just honored to be able to do that for you and uh, your family. By dedicating ourselves and our children to the Lord, we follow the ancient practice of Jewish parents who devoted their firstborn children to the Lord. We remember Hannah, who dedicated Samuel to the priesthood. We remember Mary and Joseph who dedicated baby Jesus to the Father. Baby dedication is not infant baptism. It's not a sacrament or an ordinance, nor is it securing good luck or favor. So what is it? It's the dedication of parents. In dedicating parents, we encourage parents to devote themselves to loving God with all their heart and to the sacred responsibility of loving their children to Jesus. It's the dedication of a home. The love in a home affects a child in a thousand ways. Like a tender plant drinking in the rain and the sunshine, children drink in the conversations of the home, the atmosphere of worship 
and our faith in a loving Heavenly Father. Home is where we declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's the dedication and commitment to blessing. Believers, especially believing parents, ought to follow the example of Jesus and bless their children. For in the Gospels we read, then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he took them in his arms, laid his hands on them and blessed them. Jesus blessed children and we should follow his example and bless our children regularly. Vivian and Shito, uh, would you please come? <clears throat> you stand over here. I'll stand over here. We'll put here. <laughs> We're going to work this out. So come on up here, if you would. I know it's just a tiny little island, but if you would okay. stand over here. Come on over here. Hey, guys. Hallelujah. This is Zoe. Hi. She was back there worshiping. She's an amazing young lady. Daddy, what do you see? Ah, oh, you see someone you recognize. All right. Well, here we go. Um, just a... A charge to the parents you've been down this road before it's so good to have you guys this morning it is your duty as parents to receive your children as a gift from the hand of God and it's your duty as parents to work together with the Holy Spirit to guide them into the purposes of God so do you promise to pray for and with Zoe to know God and to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, we do. By the way, Jordy's already been dedicated so long ago. Do you promise to train Zoe in body, mind, and spirit for service to and in the fellowship with God? If so, please answer, we do. Do you promise to do everything possible to lead your children to confess Jesus Christ early? If so, please answer, we do. Do you promise to raise Zoe along with Jordy in your home and in the house of God? If so, please answer, we do. I'm going to ask all of you to stand up with us. This is where I get you some babysitters, okay? All right. Cornerstone, will you promise to assist these parents to achieve their sacred duty? If so, please answer, we will. That was weak. If so, please answer, we will. I think that's good right there for a couple of nights out. All right, all right. We're going to pray, and we're going to ask you to extend your hands this way. Is there anyone else that you wanted to be with you this morning? It, it's up to you. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming today. Come on up. I'll come over here. All right. You can come on up. Yeah. Be careful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been a while. God bless you. So let's just uh, pray for uh, Zoe this morning, okay? Can we do that? It's okay if we pray for you. Let's just put our hands. And I'm going to just pray in general. I'm going to ask you in the audience to pray with us. And then anyone else who would like to pray, uh, please uh, join us then. Father, I thank you for the gift of childhood, children. We thank you for the gift. We thank you for the gift that Zoe is. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the parents and the home. Thank you for the decisions that they have made to follow Jesus. 
thank you for the courage that it takes to stand here today and to proclaim that they will raise their children to follow Jesus Christ. So with that in mind, we just dedicate this home, these parents, and this child, these children, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you would guide their every step and we take authority over anything adversarial that would come against them or try to discourage them or try to prevent them. Lord Jesus, we pray that these children in this family would grow and would flourish and that they would be more than overcomers through him who loves them. We pray, Lord Jesus, that Jordy and, and Zoe would both receive Christ as their Savior and confess him in baptism. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this family and for this day. In Jesus' name. So I can't, you know, like, I'd always love to have a prophecy at this moment, and I can't make them happen, you know, but um, I, I have been sensing something for a couple of days, so if you're just patient with me here for just a moment. Um, when I visited your home, first of all, I saw a very well-ordered home. I felt, Jesus, you are a wonderful mom. You're a great dad. And Jordy, you've grown so much, and I was so surprised to see how, how much you've grown. But when I saw Zoe, I saw something in her eyes. She's so bright and so intelligent, but I think that she's also seeing. She's, she's seeing. The Spirit of God will help her to see. And we need people who can see into the Spirit and to understand and discern the spirit and the spirits that are around us. And I believe that Zoe has a very unique uh, calling in her life. I really believe that there is something that God wants to develop in her that gives her vision, spiritual vision. And I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to like limit what that could be. I think it could be in a thousand directions, in a thousand ways. But I just see the alertness of life. She is appropriately named. See the alertness and the joy in her life and the ability to see. So she may see things before you do. So uh, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You're welcome. Thank you. Amen. Would you have a hug for me? Let me turn my mic off. Can we give them a, a hand? Uh, <laughs>